We begin tonight with some good news for seafood lovers, so mm. we can smile at the beginning of the show for once. That's a good feeling. That is. Crab meat prices are the lowest they've been in years. And we're told the price for crab meat could go back up in the blink of an eye, as mm -hmm. Brooke said, because crab populations can change quickly. So, as Brooke said, right. not to be redundant, but it's important because we like crab, right? Buy it now while it's cheap. There we go. <laughs> good work, Julian. All right. While we're on the topic of crabs, we, we just like to keep talking about crab all day. We will. As you heard Brooke mention in her story, some crab companies tell us they've had luck so far this year with their visa workers, and today that luck continued. The Department of Homeland Security just announced that they will officially be releasing 30,000 additional H-2B visas for the summer season of fiscal year 2019. Congressman Andy Harris spearheaded the effort to secure the extra visas. While crab companies tell us they're grateful for the additional visas, they say more work needs to be done. Crab companies tell us they feel the Department of Homeland Security should have given out at least 60,000 visas instead of 30,000. All right, Julian, you want another reason to smile? We talked about crabs, yep. right? We're Delmarva. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about small businesses, too, because we, we do love that those. really well here. Small businesses will now have a new way to get the money needed to open up shop and stay in business. That's a good thing. That's All right, Danny, thank you very much. The money for EDGE grants comes from a federal grant, and grant applications can be found at DellBiz.com, and they're due on June 14th. Now, today, a new police chief was officially sworn in in Seaford. Police Chief Marshall Kraft is now the new face of the Seaford Police Department. Kraft, a native to western Sussex County, was a Delaware State Trooper for over 30 years before taking on his new role as police chief. And he tells 47 ABC that his goals are to reduce crime and build relationships with the community. But before he focuses on deterring crime, Kraft wants to hear from the residents of Seaford. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Ryan Eldridge. Well, our top story tonight is out of Sussex County where voters are heading back to polling places for a second crack at the Indian River School District referendum. That's right. All right, Danny, thank you very much. And like she mentioned, polling places are open until 8 tonight at East Millsboro Elementary. Georgetown Elementary, Indian River High School, Long Neck Elementary, Lord Baltimore, and Selbyville Middle. And while Indian River awaits their referendum results, there's a piece of proposed legislation that would allow Delaware school districts to raise taxes without a referendum. The bill would give school boards the option to increase the rate or amount of its district operating tax by at least 2% every year without voter approval but it still gives the board the opportunity to hold a referendum if they wanted to raise the operating tax by more than 2%, which Indian River Superintendent Mark Steele has some concerns about. Our school board is not going to support that legislation. All right, Daniel, thank you very much. And voters aren't just out in Sussex County tonight. Voters in Snow Hill are also heading to the polls today to elect a new mayor and two district council positions. Polls are open until 7 o'clock tonight, so you still have a little over an hour to get out and cast your ballot. Candidates for mayor are Gary Weber, Richard Thompson, and Catherine Freeman. The three candidates for Central District Council are incumbent Jenny Hall, Richard Mitchell, and Melissa Widener. Mark Nixon is challenging incumbent Latoya Purnell to represent the Western District on the town council. To vote, residents can head to the train station on Belt Street, and again, polls are open until 7 o'clock tonight. All right, well, tonight, two local women are preparing for the surgery of a lifetime. That's right, Brooke, a great story there. Living kidney donors typically last longer than those from deceased donors, so if you're healthy and you haven't had issues with high blood pressure or diabetes in the past, you're encouraged to consider donating. With that, good evening, and thank you for joining us. I'm Ryan Eldridge. Today, gun rights advocates packed into Legislative Hall in Dover to express their opposition against three gun bills which had their first committee hearing earlier today. All right, Brooke, thank you very much. And as Brooke mentioned, these bills are still in the very early stages, a long way to go. Uh, and while we're on the topic of gun control in the first state, we want to touch on a bill that was recently introduced that would make it so that people who are qualified to use medical marijuana can still legally possess a firearm. This act, called Senate Bill 79, essentially clarifies existing law so that a person would not be disqualified from possessing or purchasing a gun simply because they are a registered qualifying patient under the Delaware Medical Marijuana Act. One of the bill's sponsors, Senator Anthony Del Colo, says if someone were able to obtain a concealed carry permit before they developed a serious medical condition like cancer, for example, they should still be able to have that permit afterwards without being punished. So it's really about... We're told this piece of legislation has been well received by both parties. The bill is now awaiting a committee hearing. 
If it gets signed by the committee, it will, like the gun control bills, make its way to the Senate floor. Meanwhile, a craft brewery and restaurant is expected to make Salisbury its home very soon. Owners of the Burnish Beer Company say they're focusing on bringing all types of beers to the eastern shore for people to try. They say the brewery will also have a beer garden where customers will be able to bring their pets to. They also tell us that they just signed a lease for a former industrial building located north of Salisbury, which will soon be the new home for their brewery. The owners of the company say they wanted to bring this new addition to the area to provide another family-friendly place for people to go that was also local. And Mills, who you just heard from, adds that they expect to have the brewery up and running in Salisbury sometime later this year. All right, coming up, a new video released sheds light on the story of the death of a woman we were all told about years ago.